Okay, so this video is uh, going to be a basic overview of um, the sample roast on the Revolution 500. It's not supposed to be the best profile, it's just supposed to be a basic profile um, and sort of a quick overview of things. Uh, right now I have the roaster preheating to 400 degrees. Uh, this is Artisan software running my thermocouples. And this is the stock thermocouple right here. Uh, they're reading a little bit different right now. That's just because they're in different places. Uh, every time I preheat the roaster, I preheat at the same airflow. Airflow is set to 7. Uh, a different airflow will give you different readings on the thermocouples. That's why it's important to have the same uh, air setting uh, before you charge the roaster. So this has been preheating for uh, over, over 10 minutes now. Uh, everything's nice and hot. It would burn me if I touched the faceplate here. So after about 10 minutes, uh, I'll restart Artisan here and get ready for the rose. So it's going to be um, important to pay attention to this. This is the gas gauge. Uh, controlling the gas is done uh, via this little guy down here. Uh, Counterclockwise turns the gas up, clockwise turns it down. I had it preheating uh, pre about two and a half. That setting might be slightly different depending on your roaster. So I'm going to get Artisan started here before I charge the roaster. It's 500 grams pre weighed uh, of a green uh, Ethiopian coffee. Uh, always make sure this latch is closed before up here. So my thermocouple is reading 420, this one's reading 416. Uh, I'm going to turn it down just a little bit here before I charge it. Maybe open up the air for just a little bit. So now we're about 4.15, uh, I'm going to hit charge on Artisan the same time I open this. And I like starting the uh, roast with less airflow and then working my way up. So it's important to preheat the drum enough where when I charge it with that much coffee it'll uh, absorb it. Not too fast, also not too slow. Uh, since this is a basic profile, I want to go for about four minutes until it turns uh, hand. I'm going to turn this up slightly since we got a pretty um, piece of charge weight to uh, four, uh, four no, uh, kPa. So if you know right here, uh, most people mark the turning point. Um, I don't. It's uh, since my bare thermocouples are naked, they have a really quick response time. In about 30 seconds, the uh, profile will start heading up. Uh, this trajectory is just to give me an idea of where the roast is going. And, uh, since it's a flat line, it won't dictate exactly where it ends up, but it's a rough estimate. So this thermocouple right here is reading the environmental temp, which if you get a photo here at the front of the roaster, the stock thermocouple on the roasters um, that if you purchase one of these will be down here. I have my own thermocouple coming in where this red wire is. This green wire is my uh, environmental temp, it's inside the drum, it's not inside the bean mass. Um, if you purchase one of these roasters. Yours will be right below that, so it should read fairly close. So if you come back to the profile here, um, for a generic profile, I start about three and a half, four minutes before drying. Drying ends about 300 degrees. Uh, looks like we're pretty close to on target.
There's also another thermocouple reading right here. It's off the uh, screen right now. That's uh, outside the drum. It's reading the uh, temperature between the drum uh, and insulation on the outside. It seems like it's a less valuable metric to measure, although I still do. Towards the end of the row, it'll come back down. The reason it's so high right now is because I don't have a lot of air movement. So as my bean temp gets closer and closer to 300, I'll start pulling the dryer and uh, smelling the roast. Uh, and also looking at the beans. So they're starting to turn yellow. I actually don't uh, mark the end of drying until they Hand, and I can actually smell the uh, Malheur reaction starting. Pretty close to now. So I'm going to mark it on Artisan. And really smell, I think, is the best indicator of that. So we're a little under four minutes here uh, when that was marked. I'm also going to turn up the airflow. You can go up to the air here. Um, I progressively, with each step, sort of bring it up. Uh, so I went from three to five. More airflow means more convection, uh, more convection, more more roasting, faster roasting as well. You'll see the uh, environmental temperatures start dropping. That's because more air is being pulled through. But I can kind of tell the trajectory here will still be okay. So if you're using the stock probe, it's just going to read differently. So you have to learn what the markings are um, for the stock probe. Like drying's probably not going to be at 314, it might be at 320 or it might be 310. First crack's not going to happen at the same temperature either, but as long as you use the same probe every time, you should be uh, repeatable. So I'm going to turn this down a little bit because um, it's, this trajectory it looks like we're going to be about three minutes to first crack, and I want it to be a little longer than that. So I turn this down to about one and a half uh, KPA. Don't worry what that stands for, it's uh, just sort of long. Also one of the things I'm doing when I'm roasting is I'm looking at this, so if you want to come down and get the flame too. I also try to keep an eye on the flame. Um, it's not necessity you are looking at the flame the whole time, but that's what this little slit here is for, is to get an idea of uh, how high the flame is. So I just made an adjustment down. I don't ever want the flame to go out. And it won't go out until you get close to zero here, but it's good to keep an eye on it. So I know for my uh, thermocouples, first crack happens closer to uh, about 390. And we're slowing things down because I turned down the gas and turned up the fan a little bit. Um, I'm going to turn up the gas because it looks like it might be slowing down too much. Uh, to two, two and a half kPa. Uh, I can also check the delta, which is how fast the beam temperature is changing per minute. I have it uh, reading every two seconds. That's why that number is changing every two seconds. But I can get a rough idea that we're moving at 15 degrees a minute right now. And we're at 382 at seven minutes. So we should hit first crack before eight minutes has started. Um, I guess most of the time I'll increase the fan slightly before first crack starts. So I'll bring this up to seven since we got a pretty big batch. That means a lot of air is moving through, so I need to make sure that the roast doesn't stall. Uh, so I need to make sure I keep the, the gas pressure, uh, otherwise the roast has a potential to stall. So one crack, the first crack just started, but I don't mark it right then. It can be an outlier. I wait until there's a, either a really loud one or a few in succession. It might be hard to hear on camera, but it's starting right now. So this time, 
I'm going to lower the gas just a little bit because I mostly stretch out the roast after first crack. I don't like to rush through it. I also am going to turn on the cooling fan to have that ready to go when I dump the coffee. So it's really important at this phase not to stall the roast. So I'm going to be going slow. I just don't want to go too slow. So it's, I'm constantly paying attention to uh, the trajectory of uh, this line here, or if you're just going off this, that it's slowly going up in tenths of degree increments and not backwards. For first crack, I generally don't like going below one and a half kPa for too long, uh, or I risk stalling. Uh, I'm much more happy around two or two and a half kPa, but uh, just pay attention to how fast the roast is. So I've roasted this coffee before, but generally I'd be pulling samples and snipping sort of to see where to end the rows. Occasionally if I drop a bean, I'll drop it back in. You can leave it in the cooling 